Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here. Delighted to be showing you something I'm incredibly excited about, the British Drama Toolkit, which is designed by a drama media composer, Sam Sim, for us fellow media composers. And it really is an amazing, inspiring, time-saving tool that can be used on a variety of different applications, but it has that kind of gritty, very emotional British drama feel to it. Now, basically what it is, is it's a bunch of ensembles, some strings, some woodwinds recorded here on our dry stage. But instead of using uh, controllers, it's very much a two-handed thing whereby different velocities give you different kind of degrees of intensity and movement. So basically today we're going to do a contextual demo. So I'm going to mix British Drama Toolkit with Albion 5, which they seem to go together very well, that kind of honest quiet, meaningful, emotional quality. So basically the whole thing, the whole piece is stemmed from me sitting with the viola, which I've got up here, and simply kind of jamming around what the player is doing. So I start with the softest layer, slowly introducing the various degrees of intensity over those three layers. But what I'm also doing is I'm listening to the bowing and really feeling where I should move into the next note. I'm also, at times, just leaving the odd gap so you can feel the player or players that you're trying to imitate kind of repositioning. So I've really responded to the player's performance when writing this. And as you'll see, I wrote it completely free and I've then since clicked it up. It has this very kind of human feel to it. So let's just have a listen to that first part, which is, as I say, just the viola there. We can just try and compress that in so we can see a bit of what's going on. So very little controller data. It's just velocities. Now, keeping it very simple, not developing a second subject, I'm just going to simply repeat that. I bring in a mixture of the cello, which I've panned slightly to the right, and the violin. So basically all I've done is copied the data from the viola track down, and I've split off the... Let's have a look here. Basically, this part becomes the violin. There we go. And the bottom part, this part... These two parts become the cello. So we feel more of this kind of chamber band slowly coming in. Now, when doing arrangements like this, I always recommend, this is Homai's trick, if you go to project settings, it's just a logic thing, and go into MIDI, and then go into chase, chase notes, so that you're not constantly having to start at the beginning of the track to trigger the drone. So let's have a listen to the next bit. just really beautiful it has almost like a kind of viol like character or viol type you know the baroque stringed instruments so this next bit uh, we're introducing a clarinet and then in turn there's a flute and then we've got some other cello parts that we've kind of doubled up here so let's just have a listen to how this develops
put that one back a bit. She's a bit early. But as you can hear, it's got this very um, intimate kind of chamber sound. But I want to go into movies at this point. I want to open the aperture. So I'm going to introduce little elements from Tundra Albion 5, starting with my little Vral grids, which is uh, based on Shruti boxes and accordions that I've kind of warped personally. Just kind of building up the tension there. And at this point where we bring the clarinets in, I start introducing some pizzicatos to give it a bit of weight. Just kind of easing people into the idea that the aperture is going to open. And then basically I'm using a mixture of these soft and wild, we've got these uh, no rosins. So we asked them to bring in bows, uh, this huge orchestra we recorded for Tundra. We asked them to bring in some bows with no rosin on. giving us our lovely top line. We've also got some basses coming in here. So even though Tundra is a kind of on the edge of silence, still quite a powerful, big sounding library. So we've also got these pulsing consorts also doubling up the melody. And then I've switched to using the pulsing consorts to create a middle part. Basically, it's a contrary motion thing. We've got the melody slowly getting wider and wider and the bass getting lower and lower. So I've inserted a kind of middle, quite emotional uh, harmonic line uh, using these consordinos coupled with the BDT cello to create a kind of its warm heart. Just gives it a bit of movement, a bit of focus on those Tundra consorts, which I love. And I'm also using the Tundra woodwinds. spot your little mistakes when you go in uh, intricately like this. As I say, this is me experimenting with BDT, seeing how I can use it in a really close kind of tragic sense, opening up into something more kind of epic. And finally, I've got a little cuckoo sound from Tundra that I'm using here, just as a texture. Lots of reverb on that. And the reverb I'm using basically as a kind of gelling source, because as I say, BDT is recorded here, Tundra's recorded in the hall, is my current favourite, is the FabFilter Pro R. And I'm using the Vanilla Concert Hall. I'm also just doing a couple of bits of treatment on the Cuckoo. I've eked out a bit of the top end there. And on the very first viola, what I've done is I've actually eked out the pedal A so it doesn't dominate too much. So you'll hear... And without, and with. Just sounds a bit nody, so I've just dipped that a bit. And because of this lovely, the elements of the, the strings bouncing at the edge of kind of silence, I've eked that out to the, the very top end. So it's kind of a quick one today, and that is, well, with sounds as good as these, you don't really need to work as hard, you don't need to build up the layers. The detail I'm getting from the BDT, uh, which are, you know you can use as ensembles, and then the kind of width I'm getting from Albion 5. And it's really as simple as that, very basic programming chops. But I hope you agree, you know, it has this real emotional kick.
So have a listen to how I put this all together. And I think things to listen out for are uh, when the woodwinds, the flutes and the clarinets, because similar to the strings, they're also moving and re-blowing. You'll hear that there's a motion in there, even though this is actually quite a paddy piece. And I hope you agree that there's this great kind of amazing sense of the aperture opening as you go from BDT into something more expansive like Tundra. Again, quite sentimental. This is the kind of music I'd use for something truly tragic. But I wanted to show you some shameless emotional music to go with British Drama Toolkit. Thanks, as always, for watching. There's loads more videos about BDT, including a masterclass with Sam Sim, the creator himself. If you want to go to the product page to buy it, just click on the link down below. Thanks, as always, for watching. Here we go.